This is the first ever Team Full in Kazan podcast. In this inaugural episode, we talk to Team Full in Kazan founder and head coach Mark Spencer. Mark talks about what's happening at the gym right now and the latest classes in MMA, BJJ and combat submission wrestling. He tells us more about some recent successes in the cage and also looks ahead to some forthcoming fights. But we started by asking Mark to give us a history of the gym and recall some memorable moments in almost 14 years of existence. So Team Phil and Kazan, uh, we're based in Bradford City Centre on Sunbridge Road uh, on the fourth floor. Um, this has kind of been our base for the last 12 years. Um, we're, we're in our 13th, well, close to our 14th year now. Um, we started um, just before 2004. Uh, there was a group of us who were training in Bradford City Centre at a, a gym uh, called Kickers, uh, which was Martial Arts Academy. Um, then from there, we, 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 uh, a bunch of us moved up to uh, Planet Fitness because we wanted to focus mainly on mixed martial arts or cage fighting. Um, and from there, we, we got a small group working together. A couple of us went over to Japan. Um, and that, that started really the formation of the team. Uh, the team name, Full in Kazan, um, we had a, a, an exchange student called Keshi, Keshi Maeda, who, uh, who was one of, uh, well, who organised everything to get us over to Japan, to be honest. Um, and uh, he came up with the name, um, and yeah, we liked it. We liked the, you know, the reason behind it. It's an old Japanese wartime proverb, uh, which has uh, the characters make up the four elements. Uh, earth, wind, fire, water, um, and then from there we've just we've just built. And it's really, that is quite clear then to anyone. You've put a massive amount of personal effort in. Uh, you've travelled the world um, over ten years. You're up and running now. It must be must be satisfying. Uh, but I'm sure you've had some challenges along the way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, th- I think anything worthwhile doesn't come without a challenge. You know, I mean. Everything that that I look back and I'm proud of, um, uh, you know, at the time, you know, you, you you wanting to cry, you wanting to kind of run away from it and, and not deal with it. But you know, if you if you stick in there, um, you know, you, hopefully at the end of it, you know, it's good and it doesn't break you. And you know, as the old saying said, it goes, you what doesn't what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Um, but it's, it's it's really good. You know, I mean, I think. For us, we, we've been a fighting gym for so long. Um, you know, we, we, I, I don't, I mean, I'd love to hear if there is another gym in Bradford that have the same accomplishments in mixed martial arts um, as us. Uh, you know, we're, we're I, th- I believe we're the only country in the, uh, sorry, the only gym in the country who have a uh, gold, uh, silver and bronze uh, medal from the worlds and Europeans uh, through uh, through Joe. Um, that's IMAF, that's the International that's Mixed right. Martial Arts Federation. Yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much the World Cup of, of amateur mixed martial arts. That There is no bigger, um, there's no bigger stage. Um, and, and the way that, you know, some other countries are really getting behind by funding uh, the IMAF competitions, Bahrain are really investing into, into it uh, through the world. You've got uh, China, who are now, um, you know, they're putting a lot of money into making this a real success. Um, the UFC's, you know, been part of IMAF for, for I think over a year now, um, hosting uh, IMAF two years ago um, in Vegas uh, for UFC two, uh, 200. We had one of our fighters out there, Danny Sturk, uh, representing the country and, and team full in Kazan. Um, so we went out there, I, I coached on the, uh, on the UK squad as well. So um, it was four long days of, of padding, rolling, uh, the first day was probably the more challenging one. You know, speaking about challenges, where I think I uh, I padded, rolled, and warmed up um, pretty much every member of the squad, uh, bar one, I think. Um, Sounds harder than fighting. <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah. It was quite funny because at the end of the end of the, the session, there were a few people who kind of stuck around, and said, "Oh, we're going to get our own training now." I'm like, "I'm all right, mate. I think I've uh, I've done my six hours for today." Um, but going back to kind of team falling, Kazan. Um, you know, we've had multiple champions um, across multiple weight divisions, uh, multiple systems, so Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Nogi, uh, we've had some kickboxing champions, we've had um, multiple mixed martial art champions, 
Um, it's taken a lot to get there. It's taken an awful lot to get there. You know, I think some people, and you see people come in. You know, we, at one point in Bradford, I think there was seven gyms within a mile radius of us. Uh, it was quite a few years ago. Uh, there were a lot of people trying to jump on the bandwagon of of mixed martial arts, and I think through our experience and through our pedigree, we've 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 outlasted pretty well all of them. Um, you know. I, I, and that's through hard work and dedication. Um, it's it's good. It is good, but it, it does come with its sacrifices and its and its uh, it, its its commitment as well. Now we'll move on to uh, the here and now in a moment. That's a fantastic potted uh, account of of the growth of Falling Kazan and how it's contributing and continuing to contribute to uh, the world of MMA. Um, but obviously, one key figure I know in in the growth of the gym has been your wife Marie. Um, she's she's been ever present in the gym and in the last uh, I think four or five years, she's actually been very successful competing and training herself. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, I, I'm I'm really lucky um, with, with Marie. Um, you know, before she started training, she was she was always really, and she still is. She's very supportive of what we do. Um, you know, if it wasn't for Marie, there wouldn't be a gym. You know, we we we'd have we'd have packed in years ago because there was no way. You know, because of how we've grown, the amount of students that we've got, the amount of events that we go to, the the just keeping the, the wheels turning and on on what we've got now. It, we need that strong character in Marie. She's very quiet, you know. She doesn't really say boo to a ghost, but you know the work that she puts in behind the scenes. It's um, you know it, it, it's hard to it's hard to kind of just break it down in a thirty minute slot of kind of what what that what she does. Um, I think one of the the, the most beautiful things I've seen um, uh, with with regards to kind of. Marie's when she started getting involved. I think when you're on the outside, it's really difficult, and especially as a lady, when you see a room full of guys rolling around to kind of understand, you know, that, that there's nothing funny, there's nothing sexual about what we do, you know, and she gets an appreciation. You know, when when we started the women's only course, which you know we had um, we had Joe and Marie both start that course, and and you know you see them kind of go through. Helen Smills as well did a fantastic. Um, you know, and, and you know, we had Holly as well, uh, who you know picked up some British champions before she moved on, uh, at championships before she moved on. You know, um, I think you know trying to convince you know someone that you know what we do is for everyone when it's just a room full of guys who smell funny and hitting pads and making funny groins and stuff. It's it's hard, but you know. Marie sort of you know stopping one day and, and kind of you know looking at me and going, I get it. You know, I get why why it isn't what I thought it was originally, or I get why it's addictive. Um, and at times, you know, she understands why it gets so frustrating because, like Marie, you know, was with me when I was still competing. You know, and, and the weeks up to a fight, um, it takes a lot, especially when you're not involved in the sport, to have that patience to deal with someone who's cutting weight, who's hungry, who's hurt, who's achy. You know, you, you know, she's taken me to hospital, God knows how many times. Um, what's fantastic now is the tides have turned a little bit, <laughs> so I've now taken Marie, uh, taken Marie to hospital more in the last two years, and she's taken me. Uh, she's doing fantastic. She's doing really good with the Golden Team, so she's working with those guys on the boxing. Um, she's getting some extra sessions in with Darren and Helen Curry, um, and we've seen leaps and bounds all the time. So I'm, I'm glad she's getting time to actually enjoy doing mixed martial arts and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, not just kind of a lot of the, the rubbish stuff of admin and, and accountancy and stuff like that. Well, that's uh, it's fantastic to see and I'm sure uh, she'll continue to be successful. Um, here and now then, we'll, we'll talk about the, the recent happenings and the current happenings at Falling Kazan. We're in the, uh, we're in the gym, as, as you can probably gather now. Um, there's a wrestling class underway now. You can hear that in the background, but you've had a few timetable changes in recent weeks. Tell us what's on now at Full Inkers and through the week for people who perhaps want to come down and have a look at some training? Yeah, we, we, we've sort of gone back to how we originally started. So uh, on a Monday and Wednesday, they were primarily our uh, mixed martial art days. Uh, we, we've split the class a little bit back to a kickboxing, six to seven, and uh, submission grappling, uh, seven to eight. And then we've got a fight team, which is the consistent kind of eight o'clock onwards. Um, and... 
been doing a lot of kind of research, been speaking to a lot of peers, you know, within the MMA community, uh, you know, guys who are currently producing UFC level fighters, you know, getting getting to kind of ask them questions. That's um, different gyms around the country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, because I, I've been doing mixed martial arts for such a long time, it's eighteen years. Wow. Eighteen years this year. So eighteen years in May um, was uh, May the first. Uh, 2000 was my first ever Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class, so I'm in my 18th year. You know, back in the day, you know, it's quite an old man thing to say, um, everybody knew everyone. So the likes of kind of Paul McVeigh, James Doolan, who were up in Scotland, you know, we'd pretty much see him on a weekly basis. James Doolan's doing fantastic now, he's got multiple UFC um, fighters in his gym. Um, you know, I went and trained with uh, a chap who unfortunately is no longer with us called Robert Follis. Um, before Robert um, uh, took his own life, I, w I was in contact with Robert, just asking questions around kind of how he structures his classes. Um, you know, he, he had um, at the time he had Kevin Lee, who was doing fantastic. So uh, Robert was kind enough to kind of give up some of his time and and answer my questions. Um, and there's lots of patterns to mixed martial arts. There's lots of patterns to people's development and. What we've done is we've kind of taken a bit of a back step and looked at, right, we know we can produce fighters and we know we can produce fighters at every different level. So the, the guy who's never done anything, which is pretty much the majority of our team, who've never had any martial art influence from any other club, come into our team and we'll build them into champions. Uh, we've got, we're lucky to get you know some guys coming from different disciplines. So we've got Isaac and we've got um, Jack Temple, we've got... Oscar, we've got Jacob who are coming in from other clubs and really starting to shine within the team as well, really integrating nicely and, and developing as well, which is brilliant. Um, so just looking at all that and how we you know we keep the gym functioning and actually developing it with it's led to us, you know, kind of changing the timetable slightly. We're we're doing extra sessions as well for our fighters, so um, because we're a couple of weeks out, we're going to start working more specifically with some of our fighters who've got matches, uh, going through more game plan. Um, and uh, one of the other things which has really sort of changed over the last couple of years is our Brazilian Jiu Jitsu team. Um, you know, we're doing fantastic. Um, I, th I think over the last couple of years, you know, we see our medal count. Um, you know, it's been really impressive for, for, you know, just a small little gym over in Bradford. Um, and yeah, we just see them building on this uh, each each year. Um, you know, sometimes people move on and do different things, which is which is fine and great. You know, people need to kind of you know find their own feet. Um, but the gym's gym's an open gym, so we have an open door policy uh, for anyone who wants to come train with us. Uh, the only caveat that we have um, is uh, if we've got someone competing um, from our gym with another person's gym, then. You know, through that period, we we sort of ask that you know maybe we just put it on hold. Uh, Sounds like common sense to me. Yeah, and it's it's really interesting because you know um, I'm watching some by for Asahavi the other uh, uh, the other day, and you know he has the same principle and the same philosophy. And That's George St Pierre's coach, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he's he's just got a, a, an absolute pool of fighters, and and it's quite strange just how close our philosophies are, and you know this has been our our, our, our philosophy. For years, you know, but you know, I think sometimes things get skewed a little bit through translation and through, you know, whispers and stuff. But you know, we we have an open door policy. You know, as long as we're not competing against a member of your team, you know, we've had the Predator guys over, so we, you know, we've had Sam Spencer and and um, and uh, <laughs> um, oh God, I forget his name, Ch uh, Mr. Chop, <laughs> um, come over and train with us. You know, good Craig Skelton from uh, from Harrogate's been over. You know, you know, we we get people coming through. You know, quite a bit. So, you know, if people want to come and train, as long as we're not competing against your gym in, in mixed martial arts, it's cool. It's really cool. So um, you mentioned Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You mentioned MMA there. On the timetable currently, if, if anybody has a look at the website BradfordMMA.com, uh, they'll see that. They'll see BJJ. They'll see MMA Fight Team and Combat Submission Wrestling. Eric Paulson's system. You're also um, heavily involved and affiliated with that. So the timetable's it's got different things depending on what you fancy. Yeah, definitely. And and, and I know some people kind of frown upon this thing, but 
Um, we, we offer grading in, um, in kickboxing, uh, in Eric Paulson's combat submission wrestling system. Um, and, you know, I think sometimes with, with mixed martial arts and, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, people get a little kind of, you know, uh, stuck up um, around it. Oh, it has to be Jiu Jitsu or nothing. But, you know, I've, I've, I've been a massive fan of Eric Paulson for years. Um, I mean, he, he's influenced every part of my game. Um, you know, about seven years ago, we affiliated with, with Coach Paulson, um, and you know, I'm, I'm now a level one coach under under Eric Paulson. Um, you know, working towards my level two um, in in kind of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu terms, that's that's kind of the equivalent of a blue belt, purple belt. Uh, in some people's mind, that would seem like a step down because I've got black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but it's just so different. It's so so different. Um, I think with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, people kind of it's not it's not softer, but the IBJJF rules. People are training for those because they're the most prestigious events that are out there. So the the whole kind of you know not wrist locking, not foot locking, not doing things like that until you're a certain belt. I think I think it loses the art a little bit. I mean, obviously we we try and train as safe as possible. Accidents do happen, but you know. Jiu Jitsu, when I started, you did Jiu Jitsu to work yourself into a mixed martial art fight. So there were wrist locks, there were heel hooks, there were neck cranks, there were just just awfulness. And I'm not saying that we go back to those days because it, it was pretty awful, but that there has to be that happy medium where Brazilian Jiu Jitsu isn't just IBJJF. You know, if you're preparing for that kind of competition, great, you need to focus on that rule set. But you know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is way more than just the rule set that's dictated by a, a competition. Um, and, you know, so we will teach, you know, reaping the leg, we will teach, um, you know, sometimes twisting foot locks and wrist locks and things like that. But when our guys roll, uh, if they are interested in competing, we will sort of say, you sh should maybe avoid these positions for now until you're doing the rule set. You know, that that's more for our competitors. We do the same with um, with our mixed martial art fighters as well. So, you know, we don't, you know, someone who's in day one, we don't sort of get them to start thinking about elbows because through the rule set, they won't do that for a good couple of years. So you, you've got to focus to the game. There's no point giving a football or a rugby ball and then go tell them to go play football because it's a different game, it's a different tool, it's a different thing. Um, and that, that sometimes maybe is a little bit different about how we do our jiu-jitsu, but... We do well, you know, we, we, we've, we've produced, you know, um, people have won medals at IBJJF competitions, you know, we produce, you know, um, you know, a good team who contribute towards the, the combat base, um, you know, trophies that we win at like Empire Grappling and some of the other places as well. That's BJJ, yeah. It's in Brazilian yeah, yeah. Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. yeah. So, and, and, you know, going back to your original question, that's where kind of that influence from Eric Paulson comes in where... You know, catch wrestling is is where um, catch wrestling um, and uh, it says to be where catch wrestling and, and jiu-jitsu shake hands. You know, that's 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 what he says famously. So that's a that's a, a really interesting um, snapshot again of, of what's on at Full In Kazan now and would encourage people to check out the website bradfordmma.com and you'll find all the information there. You can even sign up now. Very, uh, <laughs> very convenient, I notice. Um, <laughs> And, and you've, that's uh, also fascinating um, insight into how the team's developed and grown since it started. Tell us about what's happening then with some of the elite fighters, some of the, the elite competitors. I'm thinking specifically Joanne Doyle, who, as you, you, you mentioned her already, but she's just been out in Romania at the International Amateur Mixed Martial Arts Federation, or maybe the other way around, IMAF, I think it is, uh, the European Championships. She got a bronze medal um, at that event. Uh, she's won previous medals on, on that um, stage as well. So Joanne's been in action and you've got some other guys in uh, domestic mixed martial arts action as well. So, so give us an overview of those, if you would. 
So I think Joe got silver. Oh, did she? Sorry, sorry. Very sorry in that one. Yeah. <laughs> so she's got gold, bronze, silver now. Sorry, so, yeah, she uh, got a bronze <laughs> previously. Joe, yeah. please don't hit me. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, Joe, Joe's done really well. Um, she's she, oh, she's she's now become the woman's ambassador for UK Mixed Martial Arts Federation, which is is fantastic. And I think that really goes to kind of her commitment and what she's done. You know, no one gets funded to get go out to all these places. So to go to um, to um, Europe twice, to go to Bahrain for the Worlds. You know, you know she's got some sponsors, and we've done some. Um, some of the, uh, the some of the uh, fundraising stuff for the earlier events, but you know there's still a lot of time that you give up through you know the work time, your holidays, time for training. You know they're still spending a lot of money to get out there. You know Joe's doing fantastic, and, and like I say, after the last one, she's been named the the UK um, uh, the UK MMAF um, Women's Ambassador, which is brilliant. You know that, that's really good. Um, you know, I think you know the support from James Doyle, who's her husband, funnily enough. Um, Spot the connection. I know there's a, there's a connection there somewhere. Uh, you know, James James gets out there to everything. You know, James is really supportive of Joe. You know, the the team get behind her as well. I, I think it's really really good. But you know, you've you've got to recognise that she's put that time and energy and effort into it. Um, you know, we've also you know recently uh, uh, Jabi uh, Rahman. Um, has uh, picked up the uh, uh, the Cage Warriors title, uh, the featherweight Cage Warriors title. Uh, That's a British title. British title. Yeah. yeah, it's the Cage Warriors amateur one. So for North East, I think it is. Um, and you know he's nine and zero now. So you know it's one of those where once you get to nine and zero, you really got to take a step back with what your future looks like. What do you want to do? What is there to get out of uh, the amateur game? So you know Jab's looking at going. Going pro pretty soon, which, which for me for a long time has been a big milestone. So taking someone who's not really done mixed martial arts or any martial arts at all, and then getting them to that pro level, um, it, it, it it's a big milestone for me as a coach. So you know I'm I'm looking forward to training Jab for that that next step into pro. Got Callum Mullen as well, who uh, in his last fight he picked up the lightweight cage warriors amateur title and. Um, we're now looking to get Callum matched pretty soon um, for his first pro fight. Um, you know, Callum, you know, has got multiple British champions, uh, championships. He's uh, he's been you know training with us since I think he was twelve, so he's now nineteen, I think, um, twenty maybe. Um, it makes me feel very old. <laughs> um, and then you know we've we've got. We've got. A, a, a I mentioned more. the other two guys as well, a bit earlier, Isaac and Oscar, didn't you? Yeah. So Isaac and Oscar, so the you know very accomplished sort of tie boxers. Um, they you know we're, we're struggling to keep uh, Isaac matched at the moment. Um, he was at about you know twenty five pullouts for this one fight. So hopefully we've got him matched now. Uh, Oscar, um, you know we, we've got him matched for Almighty. You know he's really coming through. He's really developing. It's really nice to see him picking up. The jiu jitsu, you know, just listens all the time. We've also got Tom Mullen as well. You know, Tom's got some momentum behind him now because of uh, again Cage Warriors sort of showing an interest. Um, you know, Tom, Tom's one of the Mullen brothers, uh, obviously. So, you know, I've trained Kev, uh, Cal, and Tom. Um, so, yeah, another scary Mullen on the way out uh, to to go bash folk. Uh, we've got Jamal as well. You know, Jamal's. You know, he's he's one of those guys that you know once he gets going and once he lets go, it's scary. You know, the kid's got so much capability and so much, so much talent. It's it, it's wonderful. And then we've got some other people coming through as well, like Ben Harrison. You know, Ben. You know, had his first ever fight in cage warriors. Did brilliant. You know, it was it was a bit unlucky and got caught. But you know, again, that that kid's so young and so talented. It's it's unreal. It's wonderful to see. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who can keep you know naming like Abu as well. You know, Abu's come from, come from another gym um, where you know James Doll teaches over at AVMA. Um, so you know Jackie Harper comes over to us and gets some training with us. And That's our guys. Air Valley mixed martial arts. Yeah, yeah. over yeah. in Keithley. So yeah. you know we've got a nice little relationship with those guys where you know we're cross training quite a bit. Um, you know, getting Jackie Harper over here has been really good. You know, for for Joe and Marie to get some extra kind of training with ladies. Jackie's a purple belt. 
you know, Marie's obviously tried to prepare for her first fight. Her opponent just dropped out, unfortunately. So we just, you know, try to keep the iron hot at the moment. So, you know, if, if something does come up, she's ready to go. Um, just so many, just so many, you know, new young people coming through. It's it's great. It's, it's really good. Um, it it's, goes back to that thing I said about cycles. You get cycles of people. You know, it's great to have Jack Gunning back in the, in, in the, the gym after you know, kind of visit to Thailand and, and, and visit another gym. Um, you know, again, Jack, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting some work in with him. You know, changing a few things, but again, that kid's scary. You know, he's scary talented. It's just, you know, sometimes it's that mental game or it's just piecing things together. Um, and this is why we, we have kind of that longer career at amateur with our club because you work out a lot for pro. You that know. is your philosophy, is it? Personally? Get, yeah, yeah. 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 I, and, you know, with IMAF now, it's a different game. You know, it's, it's a lot different from when, from when I first started. You know, um, you know, I had one in a club fight and then I, I couldn't find any other amateur competitions back in 2001, 2000. Um, and so I ended up having my first pro fight in Italy. So, you know, so I had one inter-club and then some random guy asked if I fancied picking a guy up from Oxford if I wanted to meet him at Heathrow, if, we, if I fancied going over and flying over, having a fight with a scary Italian guy who was a blue belt under Marco Huas, who um, I never saw a way in and was significantly bigger than me with bigger gloves, uh, smaller gloves and I had bigger gloves than him. But, yeah, you know, now we've got... You know, kind of all these different events that do amateur uh, um, amateur fights. We've got events that are specifically to kind of work your way through into the UK team. We've got UK team trials. We've got the IMAFs. You know, you can you know now you can you know fight in Romania. You can fight in Bahrain. You can fight in China. You can fight in America. You know, as an amateur, I don't see the point in rushing. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, are, are really into kind of UFC and. The whole social media thing that, that that goes on, but I think now's the best time to get involved in amateur mixed martial arts. Fantastic! Well, that was so interesting to hear. Um, we've kept you talking for nearly half an hour now, so you've, yeah. you've done a, a marathon roll with the uh, with the recording machine. That's for sure. Hopefully, the week. <laughs> just just finish off then. You said uh, I think you've asked for. Uh, one or two questions on, on social media from people who follow you about the gym, about MMA, about associated matters. So we'll just we'll just have a look at three of those, three of the top questions, three of the the, the three best questions that you think have come in. Um, you're having a look through your phone as we I speak. Am. So this is on the Team Funnel Kazan Insta Instagram. I'll do two from Instagram and then I'll do one from uh, Facebook because we've got okay. on there as well. So the first one from Dan. Um, who, uh, who, who who trains with us on and off and over uh, in Leeds? How did I? How did you get started in uh, martial arts? So, I'll tr I'll try and keep this brief. Um, I used to play rugby. Um, played rugby for Batley Bulldogs, for Dudley Hill, uh, for um, Bradford Schools, and all that kind of thing. Tough guy, everyone. He's a tough guy. <laughs> no, not all. Um, and in between, kind of playing for Batley, I I, I played a game which I should have never really played. Uh, and ended up breaking my jaw in uh, four places um, and um, that kind of stopped the whole rugby career um, from there I, I just started playing for a bit of fun um, ended up having a, a massive argument with my coach at the time because people really weren't committed in the training I really wanted to win so I thought you know, try something different just got into karate uh, did karate for a year um, and then back in 2000 uh, that's when I found the first uh, uh, BJJ club over in Huddersfield, the Nova Vida uh, guys. Uh, at the time, they were called Anaconda, so a guy called Andy Williams was my first coach. Um, and then f that were it from there. So I started doing a bit of tie boxing, boxing, started training with some very scary guys in really dingy places. Um, you know, back, there were a lot of training with bouncers back then. Um, when it went at the, the BJJ club um, luckily I found uh, Darren Curry and the combat base team you know I opened you know one of the very one of the, the first uh, combat base gyms outside of Pontefract um, so there were me uh, Darren Curry and Steve Muckles who kind of started that and we kind of went from there okay that's interesting and, and fits in with with your uh, stories from the start about that leading on then to the development of Fulling Kazan, so that's good. 
Uh, next one, what what would I need to start? Uh, what would I need to get to start training? So to be honest with you, nothing. Who's that from? Sorry. Uh, from Rick's Him One. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know you, so I think we've uh, had a few conversations today. Um, so basically, nothing. Um, just no zips or studs on your clothing, anything that potentially could go over someone's face and 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 and, and cut. Um, so just plain shorts, t-shirts. Quite warm in the gym at the moment. Um, eventually, you know, if you after you've tried a class, we have some spare equipment you can borrow. There's, the, you know, we, we have some equipment for sale, which is quite reasonable. But the best thing to do is come down, check out the class, and just see see if you like it or not. Fantastic. Uh, we got one from this dodgy guy called Mergy. Oh no. Uh, Mergy would like to know if Chuck Norris is harder than him. Um, I tell you what, we'll do a we'll do a vote tonight to find out what the uh, what the what people um, think of that. Okay, well, we'll update you on that vote, the big vote then. <laughs> Who is tougher, Chuck Norris or Mergy? <laughs> Next podcast, you will find out. Um, slightly different question from what, what made me get into martial arts, but there's a, there's a sort of a question after that as well. What made me stay with it, which is an interesting question. I think we might have to do that in the next podcast because I, I don't know. I really need to think about that. Okay, let's pick pick one more then. Uh, would you recommend training at other clubs every now and then? Uh, that's from Niall Edwards. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, as I said earlier, the only time it, it does become a little bit of a conflict of interest for me as a coach um, is if you're training with someone um, who, um, who you've got a teammate competing against. Um, so, like I said, uh, you know, we've got uh, we've got people going over to AVMA, got people going over to Combat Base uh, in Ponte. Uh, there's some more lads go over to AVT as well to get some MMA rounds in. Um, you know, Callum, Tom, uh, Jab went over to Aspire to prepare for some of their fights. Um, I, I honestly don't have a problem with people training at other clubs. Again, the only conflict of interest is when we're competing. Um, against that club in a mixed martial arts event. For Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it's slightly different. I think, you know, the, the scene's still quite small and everyone kind of trains with everyone anyway and you're not getting hit in the head, um, which I think uh, is, uh, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competition is a lot nicer than mixed martial arts. You know, there's still the same opportunity to really hurt your opponent, but, you know, you're not getting concussive punches, you're not getting hit in the head uh, and, you know, Typically, there isn't the money involved that there is with mixed martial arts. We're building people up, you know, for, so that they can have a career in mixed martial arts. And, you know, why sabotage that by, you know, not looking after your students? Um, one, one of the things that I am is I am very loyal to my students. Um, it has bitten me a few times, but, you know, I've got my students back. Um, but yeah, um, I, I definitely do. And I think it's not only just training with other clubs, it's training different systems as well. Um, so, you know, there's Neil Hall over at Brain and Braun um, who teaches Sambo, um, uh, jacket wrestling and, and Nogi stuff. You know, that's the Russian system. Um, so they've got some very different kind of grips uh, from judo. We've got some guys who go up to the Bradford Judo Club up at Planet Fitness. You know, I, I, I do. I think it's, it is a good idea to go and train at other clubs. You know, I'd like to do it a lot more often. Um, just with a full time gym, it is a little difficult, but, you know, I'm going to try and head over to Ryan Hunter's, get some training in with him, because um, his, his judo is just brilliant and amazing. Uh, my judo is not great. You know, we've got uh, Bradford Wrestling Club in here as well, bringing their guys down to wrestle with. You know, I think it is good to do that. Okay, well, it's a fantastic uh, start to this Full Inkers and podcast. We've had the, the history of the gym, uh, the, uh, the current happenings, and uh, looking ahead to some, to some future dates on the calendar and some listener interaction already as well, and it's the first episode, so it can't be bad. We'll just close by asking you, what would you say then to anybody who's, who's in the area thinking about coming down, have had a look at BradfordMMA.com, just a final message to them? Just come down and check it out. Come down and give it a go. You know, I mean... Just don't come down with any zips or studs um, so you can jump on the mat and, and start doing your training. But, you know, don't have that preconceived kind of, um, that thought of, you know, mixed martial arts, fighting in a cage, they're all thugs. You know, we've got people from so many different backgrounds. I mean, 
I, I, you know, the, 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 the different cultures of Bradford, sometimes it feels like everyone comes and meets here on a Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and, the, you know, you know it's, it's brilliant. You know, at, at one point we had a kid who travelled over from America to come train with us, you know, who previously trained with us. He just wanted to come back and have a holiday over here. You know, we, we've had guys, you know, from Japan come over. You know, we, you know we've got, you know, God knows how many different, you know, people, Bradford coming into this place from different cultures, different religions, all training together, all getting along. You know, it's not, you know, it is like a family, you know, sometimes families have a little bit of a fallout, but, you know, the, the atmosphere in here is nice. You know, no one's going to get killed. No one's going to get hurt. People looking out for you. It's, it, you know, that, that's the environment that I want. Thanks for listening to the Team Full in Kazan podcast. Check out the website bradfordmma.com and follow Team Full in Kazan on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Please like and share this episode.